So this is a pretty fun problem. We're given that a function's third derivative is cosine of x, and then we're given a bunch of initial conditions here. There's one condition on f, one on f prime, and one on f double prime. So if we're given a third derivative of a function, and then we're told something about its second derivative, that suggests to me that we're going to need to take an antiderivative. Why? Because the antiderivative of f triple prime is f double prime. I also knew that we we're gonna take antiderivatives in this video because it's titled antiderivatives. So let's do that. Let's take an antiderivative of this f triple prime and the antiderivative of cosine. So what function has a derivative that is cosine? And if you'll recall, that is the sine of x. Of course, this function could have any kind of a constant on it. And because we're gonna have several constants in this problem, I'm gonna call this c1. Okay, so to check our work, if we took a derivative of this function here, we would get cosine of x, so we're good so far. Now, let's plug in this initial condition here. If we plug x equals zero into f double prime, we get sine of zero plus c1, which is just c1. Of course, we know that f double prime of zero has to be negative one, so that tells us that c1 has to be negative one. So our new function for f double prime of x is sine of x minus one. Okay, let's repeat the process. Let's take an antiderivative of f double prime of x to get f single prime of x. So we're looking for a function whose derivative is sine of x minus one. If you think a bit about it, you'll come up with the function negative cosine of x minus x. Now, what would happen if you tried to take a derivative of this? You would have negative, negative sine of x, which would be positive sine of x minus one, which is exactly what we want. Let's put a constant on here and let's determine what that constant has to be based on this initial condition. We know that f prime of zero, if we plug that in right here, is gonna be negative cosine of zero minus zero plus c2. And we know that f prime of zero has to be zero, so we get that c2 equals one. Okay, so let's write down our new version of f prime of x. I just plugged in c2 equals one right here. But we wanna find f of x, which means one more antiderivative. The antiderivative of f prime is just f, and we're looking for a function whose derivative is all of this stuff. And taking the antiderivative of each one of these three terms should give us this result. We can check that really quickly. If we take a derivative of this function, we should get negative cosine x minus, we'd get two times one half, which is one, x to the first power plus one, which is great, plus zero, great. So we have our final function right here. We just need to figure out what C3 is, and we're going to use the initial condition f of zero equals eight. If we plug x equals zero into this function, we get sine of zero minus zero plus zero. We just get C3, and we know that this f of zero has to be eight, so that means C3 equals eight. Now, our final answer for our function is this big long thing right here. Okay, I'm gonna back off of this thing so we can see it all at once. If we wanted to check this answer, we could reverse the process, and at each step we could check each one of these three initial conditions, and I think we got it right.